Hugh, the evidence about the sun is absolutely amazing to me. And you've told me astronomers have really come to the conclusion now through other evidences that the sun is not just an ordinary star. It's very, very special. How so? Well, it's got very low chromospheric activity. We see high chromospheric activity everywhere else. We also recognize it's just the right age. We realize it's entered a very finely tuned, stable luminosity phase about 50,000 years ago, just right when human beings show up on the cosmic scene. Also, astronomers have been looking for a solar twin. You know, there's millions of stars out there, but they've been unsuccessful in finding even one star that has all the characteristics that are necessary for the support of advanced life. The sun really does appear to be uniquely designed for life. Let's show them another example, and this is the, the reason why you say 13.7 billion years of star formation was absolutely necessary for us to be here on planet Earth when God created us and put us on Earth. We needed all of those years, billions of years, for stuff so we could live here, all right? Watch this, folks, you won't believe it. A few tens of thousands of light years beyond the center of our Milky Way, we arrive at the halo where most of the oldest stars reside. This earlier generation of stars is important in the construction of life essential elements. These ancient stars, in one sense, are the forebears to our planet and to our own existence. As stars exhaust their fuel and die, they bequeath to us their ashes, the heavy elements needed for the next generation of stars and for planet building. Our Earth could not even exist without nine billion years worth of ashes from dead and dying stars. Stars about the size of our sun, or smaller, lose their outer layers gradually. When the last of their nuclear fuel supply is exhausted, all that remains is a burnt-out core like a cinder after a fire. These cinders, called white dwarfs, take over 10 billion years to cool and play a critical role in our existence. For only on the surface of a special white dwarf binary star is the life essential element fluorine manufactured. Without fluorine, certain proteins would be unable to form and life in the universe would be impossible. Even more remarkable is the fact that even with as many as a trillion galaxies in the universe, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is likely one of only a few where sufficient fluorine production sites exist. When a star larger than our sun runs out of fuel, the outer gas shells undergo a sudden collapse. They crash into the core with enough momentum to ignite one final eruption, an explosion so intense that when it happens in our own galaxy, it's bright enough to be seen during daylight hours. This final cataclysmic blast, a supernova, produces many elements essential for life. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, iron, copper, silver, and many others. It scatters them throughout the interstellar neighborhood to be absorbed later by star-producing gas and dust clouds. All of these various types of stars, in all of their various stages of life and death, play a vital role in our well-being. And far from being a waste, every minute of the past 14 billion years of star formation was necessary in order to enrich our planet with the elements that make life possible. Hugh, this is absolutely amazing, this evidence. Why does it show us that God is the great designer who actually loves man? Well, you look at all the time he spent to prepare this place just for us, all the resources he expended, the vastness of the cosmos. Evidently, that was not too much resources or too much time in order to demonstrate his care and love for humanity. Use your illustration of your son. 
Well, for example, the way my sons measure my love for them is how much money I spend on them, how much time I spend with them. Well, likewise, when we look at the universe, we realize this God must really care for us a great deal, given all the time he put in and all the resources he put to our uh, benefit. You know, another good example, John, is to look at a typical American wedding. A typical wedding costs $20,000. A typical bride spends a year preparing for her wedding day, and yet the ceremony will only last 22 minutes. Why so much time and money? Because that ceremony is very high value and very high purpose uh, for that father and that bride. Well, likewise, the universe and humanity must have a very high value and a very high purpose given the resources God put toward it.